Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path. Last time we left off, we were still investigating the filming set, and now uh, Agent Lang here says that it was Courtney who possibly killed the president because the security camera footage saw them going up on the roof together. And even though we said, well, no, here's the reason why this wouldn't work, he's still uh, sticking to it, so let's see what else he has to say about it. A photo was recorded 10 or 20 minutes after President went up to the roof of that woman. That woman. She came back down the elevator alone. After that, there was no sign of President getting on the elevator at all. There's no other way for a President to get down without using the elevator, is there? Besides getting pushed off the roof by that woman, that is. The President never came down from the rooftop? That's right. The security camera is always watching the entrance of the elevator. It was specifically set up to record anyone who entered or exited the rooftop. Essentially, the camera created a locked room. One in which the president vanished from. A locked room. I see. This is quite an unfavorable piece of evidence for George Courtney. Okay. Alright. A rooftop escape? That's a, that's a difficult feat. So even the Agarasu can't just fly through the sky. That's right. I, um, I still need more tra training to be able to pull that off. Are you saying you're trying to train yourself to fly? That would be awesome! Alright, but there's one thing that actually kind of stuck out there when he said that there's no other way for a president to uh, get off that roof besides using the elevator. However, we all know from the last case that there is something else that they could possibly use if he knew about it. He says there's no other way for a president to get down without using the elevator, however, uh, we know the Grand Tower says right here, uh, there's a secret entrance to the 51st floor on the roof. Objection! If he knew about that, then perhaps, yeah, that's how he got down. However, why would he know about that? As a matter of fact, there was one. A hidden route, that is. A way down without using the elevator? You better not tell me he flew off or something. There's no need for that. It's quite simple. The President just needed to know about the existence of the hidden 51st floor. The 51st floor? This building has a hidden 51st floor. It is accessible through a secret hatch on a rooftop. Using that route, it would be it would be possible to leave the rooftop without even using an elevator. Hidden room? Secret hatch? How could the president have known about that? I wonder. I don't know the answer myself. I'm merely raising a possibility here. In the first place, what's this all? What's this all about? That this hidden 51st floor sounds like something that a ninja girl over there would love to get into. No way! I'm sick of that place. Okay, that place only holds bad memories, after all. True. The 51st floor was a secret storeroom for a black market auction. Its true purpose was only exposed yesterday. Black market auction. You, you aren't suggesting the president was involved in something like that, are you? I have no proof. However, the possibility exists, does it not? Hmm. I wouldn't put it past that president. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not gonna do that, but... Yeah. He's hollowing because he's pissed off. Ah! Impossible! The president would never... He would never be involved in a black market auction! What? What's this? You punks. Are you prepared? If you're gonna spout nonsense like that, I'll tear you to pieces! Ah! Oh, uh, well, she ran away. You don't have any idea the amount of respect that man has earned from his country's, from his country's people. I see. We, we, have, we have seen the president's true colors. However, the people of Zhang Fa remain in the dark. Should I inform Agent Lang of the president's true nature? Mm, okay, if he doesn't give a, choice, give a choice. No, telling him that would just further cloud his judgment. I understand, Agent Langa. Please calm down. We spoke out of line, and I apologize. Sorry. My emotions got the best of me. And Kay, how long do you plan on hiding? You can come out now. I'm sorry. It's fine. I, my anger is directed towards the President's killer. Well, I'll be. You're actually a pretty good guy, ain't you? That lawyer to your President, it's mighty admirable. What's it to you? Aw, don't be like that. I've got some good news for you, I reckon. What? The, 
president ain't never passed through that 51st floor. You can count on me. Really? I was in the store myself and I saw it with my, my very own eyes. That's right. She snuck into the storeroom that day. Alright. Ah, <sighs> thanks. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. What is it? I don't intend to give the culprit a single step of leeway. No one's seen the president since he met with Courtney two days ago. That doesn't change the fact that the body wasn't here yesterday. If he were pushed off two days ago, it would be odd that he wasn't found until yesterday. I doubt a small a fall from a roof would take a whole day. I must, well, never mind. I was thinking, never mind. Um, I was thinking a movie, but I don't want to spoil it. I'll, I'll admit, there are a few things I still haven't figured out. Regardless, there's one thing I'm certain of. There is? What exactly occurred here last night? I'm certain we'll have to we'll have to look into that in order to uncover the truth. Because the body and the footsteps could have only appeared last night, right? Agent Lang, we'd like to bring the body in for the autopsy. Uh, by your name, I never looked up the house how to pronounce it properly. It's it's in your hands. Make sure you show the proper respect. I also have one more thing to report. What is it? We found some footprints in your body. Um, they were left within the area that looks like a monster's footprint. There were human footprints within a monster's footprint? What kind of footprints? Sir, there were footprints of a child about the size of an elementary school student. Oh boy. What? Huh? An elementary school student? Wait, could it be? Who, who was that? Um... Miss Nichols? I, uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please excuse my rudeness. Is there something you want to say? What is she so scared of? I'm worried that you'll think poorly of me, but, um, please let me testify something. It's really important. Well, that's not something you need to be so worried about. What is it? Last night, I, uh, I actually came here. What? Ah! Why did you come here? Well, I got a little worried, so I stopped by to check up on John. John? You mean John Marsh? As I thought. Yes, last night, um, John stayed here late in order to practice by himself. Wow, he's really dedicated. Well, this movie is the first time he's starring as the lead role, so... I'm sure he wants to do his best. She must have, she must have witnessed something that last night. When was this? Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was a little past 10 p.m. It looked like it was going to rain and I was getting worried, so I came to check up on him. And when I got here, well, I, um... You saw something? Yes, John was passing by himself and right above his head, I saw a long, long neck. A neck? Yes, its skin was really scaly, almost like a reptile. It was like the neck of a dinosaur. Woo, whoa there, it could have been G -G Gordy? Last time I went hunting for it, it was a bust. Oh, we all remember that. But I reckon this could be the real deal. What? So this time it's Gordy? Well, that's right. I was really surprised. After all, John is the boy who can, who can communicate with Mozilla. Yeah, that's right. Them horns on his, uh, on his, uh, wait. Those, them horn on his lets him hear what the monster's saying, right? I think the, shoot, the word head should have been there or whatever. He, even so, he was looking up at Gordy's face and he was talking to it. It was like they were friends. Doesn't that sound weird? You said it, sister. That's pretty darn strange, I reckon. That boy's a little traitor. It seems she's gotten reality mixed up with the uh, movies. Hey, Missy. Did you really see that? Well, yes, but I was so shocked I immediately ran home after that. What do you make of this, Mr. Prosecutor? Has another monster taken the stage? Agent Lang, do you really believe this absurd testimony? <laughs> I couldn't care less about the monster. However, it looks like we, uh, it looks like who we need to talk to next has been decided now, hasn't it? 
John Marsh. He, he was here last night. It's very likely he saw something, isn't it? Ah, the attaboy! John Marsh! We've got some questions for you! Where is he? Um, John kind of left a while ago. What?! Let's go after him! Seriously, you would think we'd still be here, but yeah, what can you do? Back in the Grand Tower, outside Grand Tower Plaza. Duh! Where'd he run off to? He might have just went back home. That's right! I mean, it doesn't look like they're gonna get uh, any filming done today. Or he may have run away. Aren't you just overthinking things a little bit? He's still a child. I can't imagine he could have murdered the president by himself. Who said he was alone? Maybe the monster helped him. That boy can summon a monster to his aid, right? <laughs> Very funny. I'm not saying that kid's definitely not the culprit. But right now, he's the most prominent witness we have. So, we'll need to find that brat. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth! Ah, uh, Gummy! Uh, I... 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 Uh, okay, what the hell? He ran away! What is, what is the detective doing? <sighs> it doesn't matter. It's not like I can rely on this country's police anyways. Agent Lang, do you intend to continue investigating by yourself? Well, yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that? Didn't you always have a small army of subordinates with you before? That's right. But, you know, being a lone wolf isn't all that bad. You don't have to worry about your subordinates or partners. All you need to all you need are your fangs. Simple, right? Subordinates and partners. Well then, I'll be seeing you too. <laughs> Things are getting interesting interesting. I reckon I'm, I'm about to get real busy myself. After all, I got me a pair of monsters to hunt. I'm definitely getting my hands on this scoop. She does run kind of odd. Things are got, things have gone pretty crazy, haven't they? Indeed. There, there's a the footprint of Muzilla, and now the shadow of Gordy. It's almost exactly like the movie. How about we go monster hunting too? Well, hmm? isn't that who? Isn't that one of Lang's men? He's one of Agent Lang's subordinates. We met him during another case. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, Professor, uh, prof not Professor, uh, Prosecutor Edgeworth. It's been a while. Shouldn't you be following Mr. Lang? Agent Lang, uh, Shifu is no longer my boss. What exactly happened? Do you remember the incident from one month ago? The Yal oh, the Yalagrasu incident we had been involved with. Oh, man. That was only a month ago in this game. Well, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Agent Lane made a major mistake back then. He almost ate in a bed of dangerous criminal. Oh, yeah, but he didn't know that. Well, certainly. It had come quite close to that at the time. Shifu took responsibility for what happened. And our team was disbanded. Disbanded? So that's why, that's what Agent Lang was talking about when he said he had become a lone wolf. Then, why are you here? Well, that's, uh, well, I was a little worried about Shifu. It seems that even now, he's, he's still chasing after them. The ghosts of 12 years past. The ghosts of 12 years past? Just, what are you? I'm sorry, I've already said too much. If you'll excuse me. What the hell are they talking this whole 12 year thing? I don't, I can't think of it. No, no, it wasn't. These ghost Agent Ling's, uh, Agent Ling's chasing after. Do they also have something to do with this case? It looks like everyone's left now. So, what do we do now? Well, Miss Hart is going after monsters and Agent Ling's going after John. We should also try approaching this case from a different angle. What angle would that be? We should listen to what Judge Courtney has to say. Ah, well, that's right. If I'm not mistaken, Miss Courtney is... Let's see here, um... Take, take my leave. Oh, she has a trial for Patricia Rowland. Okay. 
She said that she had a trial coming up. Indeed. Let's head to the courthouse as well. Okay. All right, we're going to the court. Ah, oh, to be continued. Hmm. Ah, usually I, I would end my episodes here, but in 15 minutes, I could end it here. We called an early episode, but uh, let's just go on, go ahead just for a little bit more. Why the hell not? Longer episodes. How's that noise? Keep hearing stuff. Oh, look, guys, we're inside a courtroom. I think it's the first time we've seen it in this game. Courtroom number three. Ha! What are you, Francisca and Ray? Oh, okay. Well, that's because of all the people who should have been there it can't be. Oh, yeah. Oh, never mind. Court is now in session. Is the defense ready? Of course, Your Honor. We can begin whenever you want. The prosecution has been ready for the start, Your Honor. Jill Crane, the attorney in charge of defense, has passed on from this world. Furthermore, Sebastian the Best, the prosecutor in charge, has disappeared. Okay, so those two took their place. And so, Francisco and Mr. Shields have taken over their duties. Before we begin, I would like to apologize for the delay of today's trial. As the crime took place in the prison, a place where justice is normally administered, and the defendant was awarded in the prison, further exhilarating the situation, additional time was specially arranged to investigate and prepare for the trial. In addition, the defense attorney in charge of the case, Jill Crane, has recently passed away. Due to these circumstances, the trial was further delayed. Mr. Shields, Ms. Von Karma, at this time I'd like to give you my gratitude for taking up this responsibility on short notice. I guess it's the last job Courtney Pie's friend left behind for us, huh? Well, Uncle Ray's more than happy to help out. Although, having said that, I only had I only had enough time to skim through the case files. Well, I kind of feel bad for Ray because, like, well, not say he feel bad because, like, he knows this person's guilty, but he's still doing his job. So it's like whatever. Are you okay on your air, Franny Pie? What kind of prosecutor abandons his own case and vanishes without a trace? I won't allow any more delays in this trial while we wait for that foolish man to return. I received the evidence just now. There should be no problem continuing the trial. You have my thanks. And with that, I hereby call the defendant Patricia Rowland onto the stand. Yep. Now then, will the, will the, will the prosecution please give us their opening statement? Very well, Your Honor. The defendant... What? Please wait, Your Honor. What is it? Well, there's something I'd like you to fill, fill me in on. Just what exactly am I doing in a place like this? Well, then perhaps you would do well to listen to the opening statement. Hmm. So if I listen to it, I'll get it, huh? Okay, then. Let's hear it. That was the plan from the start. Now, if you would kindly shut up and listen... Okay, I was... Alright. The incident occurred in the detention center and the prison warden and the prison warden Roland is in charge of. Um... The victim is Horace Knightley, who is being held in the detention center. The prosecution is certainly that, certain that this woman here is the culprit. This knife, the murder weapon, is a decisive ever. Huh?! Miss Von Karma, is something wrong? That's... impossible! The evidence is... What's wrong with the evidence, Franny Pie? The evidence... The knife's gone! The chisel of Dogen's bell attached to it is missing, too! What? What? Oh, how the hell did this happen? Order! Order! Prosecutor Von Karma, what is the meaning of this? I... I don't understand it either, Your Honor. If there's no evidence, then I suppose there's not much reason for me to be up here. Some prosecutor can't even hold on to one little piece of evidence. What a dunce. I I only received everything that, that the previous prosecutor had. Ah! It appears the culprit is, a, is that pamper prosecutor, the boy blunder. Hey, Corny Pie. What is it? Your Honor, considering our predicament, uh, what say we postpone the trial until later? Excuse me? The defense's proposal is overruled. Eh? Courtney Pie! I know, right? It'd be troubling for me if this trouble, if this trial were to be delayed any further. I just want everyone to know that I'm innocent. 
as soon as possible. You are far from innocent. Innocent? I've had more than enough of your foolish. And besides, you don't have any evidence, right? I recall a certain, uh, certain saying that in court, evidence is everything, wasn't it? Since there's no evidence, that would make me innocent. Isn't that right, Your Honor? That is correct. Ah! Uh, what? Whoa, hold on a minute here. The prosecution has not produced sufficient evidence to prove the defendant guilty. As such, I hereby find the defendant Patricia Rowland. You can't be serious. Oh, okay. I was about to say, am I going to have you confetting the courtroom already? Hold your horses, Courtney Pie. You can't just declare your inno your her innocent all of a sudden. Is something to matter? For the defense to object to a not guilty verdict. Well, I mean, even you must know that the warden over there is guilty, right? You were there with us when we found the murder weapon. Mr. Shields, a judge must remain impartial when handing down the verdict. That is why I cannot allow myself to get caught up in my own personal feelings. The person who was present when the murder weapon was discovered, and the judge sitting before you now, are two completely different people. You're kidding, right? I can only hand down a verdict based upon the evidence I was that was presented. There, there is evidence, it's just, well, it's not here right now, but... A few minutes, that's all I need. I'll find the evidence and return to court without fail. The prosecution requests a brief recess, Your Honor. Well, the defense would also like to recess, Your Honor. Courtney Pie, please. I understand. I shall grant your I shall grant your request. Well, Justine, darling, aren't you wishy-washy today? This court will now adjourn for a 15-minute recess during which the prosecution and the defenses shall prepare for the resumption of this trial. Understood, Your Honor. Phew! That was a close one. Court is now adjourned. Well, it seems like we're in a bit of a pickle here. What happens to the evidence? Why is... Courtney kind of acting like that? Like, oh, no evidence? But, okay. Not guilty. She, I mean, I... Uh, Ray said it. He's like, you were there. You know she's guilty, but I guess a judge can't, you know, has to be impartial, so. Uh, what can you do, guys? Well, I guess we'll find out what we're going to be doing in the next episode. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Oops, dropped my phone there. Uh, Prosecutor's Path. I'll see you guys later.